We're diving deep, you know, into the GTA real estate market. Oh, yeah. We've got a special guide with us for this one. Oh, is that right? Toronto real estate agent Manaj Atri put together this uh, collection of 20 news articles. Wow. Trust. For his clients. Yeah. So he's trying to keep people informed, basically. Yeah. Give them some insight into what's going on. Exactly. Let this market. Yeah. And we're going to unpack it all just for you. So. Awesome. Manaj, you know, he seems to know what his clients are worried about. What do you mean? He flags some pretty uh, eye-catching headlines, I guess you could say. Like what kind of stuff? Especially for anyone who's interested in new builds. Oh, okay. Um, one of the articles he sent over was from Better Dwelling, and the headline is crazy. Okay. Toronto, new home prices down more than 30%. Condo sales down 91%. Oh, wow. Pretty serious numbers. That's pretty dramatic. Yeah. What's interesting is that even with the price drops mm -hmm. and, you know, interest rates have eased up a little bit. Yeah. The article saying demand for new homes in Toronto is just super weak. Really? Like the weakest it's been in years. Wow. Developers are even offering incentives, but it doesn't seem to be working. It's not enough. Not enough. So let's get into it. Yeah, let's break it down. Okay. So according to Better Dwelling, single family home prices okay. dropped another 1% just in October. Wow. Down to $1.55 million. Okay. That's a 32.6% drop since the peak in 2022. It's a pretty big chunk of change. Yeah. And it's not just detached homes either. Right. Condo prices are falling too. Yeah. Down 1.8% in October. Right. To $1 million. A million bucks. Yeah. And what's really, I guess, significant is that mm -hmm. condo prices were holding up a lot better than single family homes until recently. Interesting. So that kind of shows that, you know, the slowdown is spreading. For the whole market. Yeah. The whole new home market. So what they're basically saying is, yeah. is that investors are the ones that are propping it up. Yeah. Propping up the condo market right now. Wow. Typical buyers are basically priced out at this point. Yeah. That makes sense. And investors are stepping in, hoping to snag a deal. Yeah. yeah. Hoping to cash in later when or if the market rebounds. If. It's a big if. It's a risky bet. Yeah, especially if those investors start pulling back. Oh, totally. I mean, what happens then? Could see even steeper decline. Yeah, it makes you wonder if now's a good time to buy. Yeah. Is it the bottom? Or if we're headed for like... A bigger correction. Yeah, or more of a correction. Yeah. But I guess before we jump to conclusions... Yeah. we got to dig into the sales numbers. Okay, let's see what's going on. Only 765 new homes sold in October. Wow. That's a huge drop. It's a 60% drop year over year. Oh, my goodness. And get this. Okay. It's 77% below the 10-year average. So way fewer people are buying. Way fewer. Normal. Yeah. And the condo sales are even more shocking. Really? Yeah. Only 210 condos sold in October. Okay. That's down 84% year over year. Wow. And 91% below the 10-year average. So basically, no one's buying condos. It seems like it. So we expected a slowdown, but these numbers are way more significant than we thought, mm -hmm. especially for condos. It really suggests a major shift. It does. Seems like all this economic uncertainty yeah. and falling prices is making people think twice. Yeah, definitely. It makes you wonder if things are going to get worse yeah. before they get better. Manoj also included some articles about those new mortgage rules. Oh, right. The ones coming in December. Yeah. December 15, 2024. Yeah. There's one from Real Estate Magazine that explains the two main changes. Okay. So what are they changing? The first one is that first-time home buyers. Okay. And people buying new builds. Okay. They'll have access to 30-year amortizations. 30 years. Wow. So that means they can spread their mortgage payments over a longer period. Right. So that means lower monthly payments. Exactly. So it could make home ownership a little more attainable. Yeah, a bit more attainable for some people. Makes sense. And the second change is that the insured mortgage limit is being increased to $1.5 million. $1.5 million. Okay. This is a big deal for buyers in expensive markets like Toronto. Oh, for sure. It basically means you can qualify for a mortgage with a smaller down payment. I see how that would help. So, for example, someone buying a $1.2 million home in Toronto. Okay. They would need a down payment of $240,000. Under the old rules. Yeah. But with this new limit, they might only need $95,000. That's a huge difference. It is. That could really help some people. Yeah, for sure. And Real Estate Magazine actually cites a TD Economics report. Oh, okay. And it predicts that these changes will boost home sales and prices in early 2025. Oh, so a bit of a bump. Yeah. But they also think it'll be short-lived. Interesting. So it's important to remember yeah. that these rules won't help everyone equally. Right. 
for example, that extended amortization yeah. only applies to first-time buyers okay. who need mortgage insurance. Right. And that's not everyone. Not everyone needs that. And TD Economics says only about 44% of home sales involve first-time buyers. Okay. And only 20% of mortgages issued this year were insured. So, yeah, it's not a magic bullet. No. It might help some people for sure, but... But not everyone. Not everyone. And it could even make affordability worse in the long run. How so? Because if more people can suddenly afford to buy because of these new rules, that could push prices back up. Oh, I see supply and demand. Exactly. So it's this balancing act. It is. The government's trying to help people get into the market, but they also don't want prices to skyrocket again. Right. It's tough. It's tough. It's a tough situation for sure. So speaking of government intervention. Yes. Manoj included an article from Canadian Mortgage Professional. Okay. About how those recent interest rate cuts. From the Bank of Canada. Yeah. They might have saved the housing market. From a collapse. Yeah. The complete collapse. Wow. But the article also says those cuts probably won't be enough to bring the market back to where it was a few years ago. So it's like a Band-Aid solution. Yeah. Not a long-term fix. Exactly. And that's because even though the Bank of Canada has lowered its policy rate. Yeah. The rates you actually get on a mortgage mm -hmm. haven't dropped as much. Right. And then there's still a lot of uncertainty in the economy. Of course. Which makes both buyers and lenders nervous. Absolutely. So Canadian mortgage professional quotes this economist. Okay. Who said those rate cuts basically rescued the market from like a total meltdown. Oh, wow. But they won't magically create a buying frenzy. No, probably not. And it brings us back to supply. Ah, the S word. We can't just rely on lower rates or new mortgage rules to fix the housing market. We need more home. We need to address the lack of supply. Yeah, for sure. And Karen Yalevsky, who the COO of Royal LePage. Okay. She makes this point in the Real Estate Magazine article. What did you say? She says all levels of government. Okay. They need to focus on building more homes. Right. To address this long-term problem. Yeah, that's the key. It's a long-term problem. It is. And we need long-term solutions. And that's where things get tricky. What do you mean? Well, the Better Dwelling article. The one we talked about earlier. Yeah. Okay. We found that construction of new homes is actually slowing down. Really? Even though interest rates are falling? Even though rates are falling. You think it'd be the opposite? You would think. Huh. So why is that happening? Well, it seems like there are other factors at play. Like what? Like the rising cost of construction materials. Oh, yeah. Of course. Labor shortages. Right. And all the red tape and regulations that developers have to deal with. So it's not just about the cost of borrowing. No. It's about all these other factors. Exactly. And then there's population growth. Right. More people need places to live. Yeah. Minaj sent an article from Canadian Mortgage Professional about how those recent immigration cuts in Canada okay. could actually slow down housing demand. Interesting, because immigration has been a big driver of demand, especially in big cities. So any changes to immigration policies will definitely impact the real estate market. Yeah, everything's connected. It is. It's a complex system. Manoj also included this article from Yahoo Finance. Oh, that really got me thinking. About what? About rent control. Okay. Or the lack thereof in Canada. Interesting, because we only have rent control in five provinces, right? Right. And even in those provinces, there are tons of exemptions. Oh, wow. I didn't realize that. Yeah. And the author of this article, okay. Ricardo Trangin, okay. he thinks it's time to have a serious conversation about rent control across the country. Okay. So what's his argument? He's basically saying that while some types of rent control... Like rent freezes. Yeah, like rent freezes, they've discouraged new construction in the past. Okay. There's not enough evidence to say that newer forms of rent control... The ones that allow rent to increase with inflation. Right. Oh, God. That they have the same negative effect. Interesting. So he's saying there are ways to do rent control that might not hurt construction. Right. And he even cites studies from the CMHC. Okay. And this housing journal to back up his claims. So he's done his research. Yeah. And he goes even further. How so? He suggests that the federal government could offer incentives... Like what kind of incentives? Maybe tied to infrastructure funding. Okay. To encourage provinces to implement stronger rent control policies. Wow. That's a pretty bold idea. It is. It shows how concerned people are about affordability. Yeah. Not just for buying a home, but for renting, too. Definitely. It's a complex issue. Oh, sure. With passionate opinions on all sides. Yeah. Okay. Let's shift gears a little bit. Okay. Where are we going now? Let's look at some other trends that Minaj flagged. Okay. Okay. I'm intrigued. He sent this article from Real Estate Magazine about the rise of rent to buy. Rent to buy. Interesting. Especially in those four season communities. Like where? 
Like the Blue Mountains? Oh, yeah. Beautiful area. It seems like more and more people are drawn to these areas. Yeah, especially now that so many people can work from home. They want a change of pace. Yeah, they're looking for a lifestyle change. For sure. And rent to buy offers a way to get into the market yeah. without needing that big down payment right away. So how does it work exactly? It lets you build equity while you're renting okay. and oh. potentially lock in a purchase price at today's rates. So you're kind of hedging your bets. Exactly. Interesting. It can be a good strategy in a fluctuating market. Yeah, that makes sense. And they even have this story in the article. Oh, a real life example. Yeah, yeah. about this retiree named Mark Foster. Okay. Who rents out his place in Collingwood. <sighs> during the winter months. To cover the cost of his stays in Florida. <laughs> exactly. That's clever. It is. Smart way to make the most of your property. It is. And enjoy a flexible lifestyle. Now here's a little cautionary tale. Uh-uh. Manoj included an article from Thorold News. Okay. About a property owner in Welland. Yeah. Who got fined $25,000. $25,000, what do they do? Because their unlicensed short-term rental didn't have working smoke alarms. Oh, wow. It's a reminder that there are rules and regulations. Oh, for sure. Especially when it comes to safety. Yeah, safety's paramount. If you're considering the short-term rental route, you gotta make sure you're doing things by the book. Absolutely. And speaking of cautionary tales. Oh, oh another one? Minaj included a couple of articles from CBC Investigates. CBC Investigates, okay. About a lawyer in Toronto who was sent to jail for stealing millions of dollars from her clients. Millions of dollars, wow. To fund a lavish lifestyle. That's unbelievable. It just goes to show that you really need to do your due diligence when you're working with real estate professionals. No matter how trustworthy they seem. Exactly, you uh -oh. can't be too careful. Especially when large sums of money are involved. You gotta check credentials. Right. Look for red flags mm. and never be afraid to ask questions. Good advice. So we've covered a lot of ground already. We have. We've seen how the Toronto new home market is really struggling. Prices and sales are down. Yeah, significantly. It's a tough market out there. We've discussed how new mortgage rules and interest rate cuts are attempts to stabilize things. Yeah. But they might not be enough to address the root causes. The underlying issues. Like affordability and supply. Exactly. And we've even explored some alternative trends. Yeah, and a few cautionary tales along the way. Exactly. It's a lot to take in. It is. But hopefully it's giving you a better understanding of the GTA real estate market. Yeah, I think so. All its complexity. It's a complex beast. It is. And stick huh. with us because in the next part of our deep dive... Oh, there's more. Yeah, we're going to delve into some even more fascinating articles. Oh, I can't wait. The Miosh curated for his clients. Oh, so there's a lot more to uncover, so stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Deep Dive. We're continuing our look at the GTA real estate market. Still guided by Manoj and his articles. Yeah, with all these articles that Manoj actually put together for his clients. Yeah, it seems like he's giving them a really well-rounded view of what's happening. Yeah, he's included some stories that go beyond, you know, just market trends and numbers. Like what kind of stuff? Like this one article from Village Report about this homeowner in Toronto. Okay. Who had a squatter take over their basement. Oh, wow. That's unsettling. It is. The homeowner actually felt threatened and had to call the police. That's crazy. You know, you think about falling prices. Yeah. And you wouldn't think about squatters. No. But it's a good reminder that there are still challenges out there for homeowners. Definitely. It makes you think about those what ifs. Right. Those things you don't always consider. Exactly. So it's not just about the numbers. You know, it's about real people's lives. Yeah. And speaking of the broader context, okay. Manoj included this article from Better Dwelling about how the Bank of Canada might actually slow down its interest rate cuts. Interesting. Why would they do that? Because of all those government stimulus measures that are being introduced. Oh, right. I heard about that. Yeah, both the federal and Ontario governments are planning to give out those stimulus checks. Yeah. And there's even talk about a temporary break on the GST for essential goods. Wow. So they're really trying to boost the economy. They are. And the article suggests that this could make the Bank of Canada hesitant to lower interest rates too quickly. Because they're worried about inflation. Exactly. They don't want prices to get out of control. Right. It's a tough balancing act. It is. It mm. creates a lot of uncertainty for people. Yeah, for sure. Who are trying to make financial decisions. Like, should I buy a house now or wait? Exactly. It's hard to know what to do. The article quotes this analyst who thinks these stimulus measures yeah. could actually lead to smaller interest rate cuts than we expected. So instead of a big cut in December? Yeah, we might only see a small one. And that would affect mortgage rates. 
It would. Because mortgage rates are tied to those Bank of Canada rates. Exactly. So even a small change can make a big difference. For sure. Manoj also included this article from Castanet. Okay. With some practical advice from a mortgage broker named April Dunn. Okay, I like practical advice. Me too. She recommends reviewing your mortgage every year. Every year, even if you're not planning to renew or refinance. Yeah, even if you're not planning to do anything. Why is that? Because things change, you know? Yeah, life happens. Exactly. Your financial situation changes. Jobs, kids, retirement. Exactly. And she thinks by reviewing your mortgage annually, you can potentially save money. Okay. Discover new options. That you didn't know about. Yeah, and just make sure you're on the right track financially. So it's about being proactive. Yeah. Taking control. Exactly. Instead of just reacting to things. Now, this next article might be really interesting for first-time home buyers. Okay, let's hear it. It's from Pembina Valley Online, and it's about the first home savings account. The FHSA. Yeah. Okay, I've heard about this. Mm. It's this new savings plan in Canada, specifically designed to help people buy their first home. Yeah, it's supposed to be pretty good. It is. It combines some of the best features of a TFSA and an RRSP. Oh, wow. The best of both worlds. Right. Your contributions grow tax-free. Okay. And you can even get a tax deduction for the money you put in. So you're saving money on taxes, too. You are. And unlike an RRSP... Where you have to repay the money you withdraw. Yeah, to buy a house. Right. The FHSA withdrawals don't need to be repaid. So it's free money, basically. Basically, it frees up more cash for your down payment and other expenses. That's awesome. The article quotes this financial expert who recommends opening an FHSA as soon as possible. Even if you're not ready to buy a home yet. Yeah, because you can contribute up to $8,000 per year. Okay. And that contribution room accumulates over time. So the earlier you start, the more you can save. Exactly. It's all about planning. It is. And speaking of planning. Yeah. Let's go back to affordability for a second. Yeah, that's been a recurring theme in these articles. It has. We talked about those government stimulus measures right. and how they could be a double-edged sword. Yeah, maybe helping in the short term, but driving up prices later. Right. And we discussed the potential impact of rent control. Yeah. But Manoj included an article from Nesto.ca okay. that takes a broader look at the Canadian mortgage market. Right. It's called Mortgage Market Risks in Canada. Balancing Affordability and Stability. Catchy title. And it quotes Carolyn Rogers, who's the Deputy Governor of the Bank of Canada. Yeah. And she's basically warning against messing with the mortgage market too much. What does she mean? She's saying that while policies designed to improve affordability can help in the short term, yeah. they can also have unintended consequences. That could hurt the market in the long run. Yeah. So we have to be careful. We do. Uh, the article actually mentions a few specific risks facing the mortgage market right now. Like what? One is the upcoming mortgage renewal wall. The renewal wall? What's that? Apparently a huge chunk of existing mortgages in Canada. How many are we talking? About 60%. Wow, that's a lot. It is. They will need to be renewed in the next two years. Okay. And because interest rates are still higher than they were a few years ago. Yeah. A lot of homeowners are going to see their monthly payments jump up. Oh, that's not good. No. It could put a lot of pressure on household budgets. Yeah. And it could even lead to more mortgage defaults. Where people just can't afford to make their payments. Right. And while Canada's mortgage arrears rates have been pretty low historically, hmm. the current economic climate could make this renewal wall a bigger risk. Yeah. With high inflation and people carrying a lot of debt. Yeah. It's a recipe for trouble. It makes you wonder if those interest rate cuts from the Bank of Canada are going to be enough. To offset those higher mortgage payments. Yeah, for a lot of people. That's a good question. And the article also brings up some concerns about extending mortgage amortization periods. Which has been an idea to try and make things more affordable. Yeah. But it's not a perfect solution, is no. it? No, because while stretching out your amortization can lower your monthly payments. Yeah, you end up paying more interest over the life of the loan. Right. It's like kicking the can down the road. Exactly. You get relief now, but you pay for it later. And as Carolyn Rogers points out, yeah. there's no such thing as a free lunch. Nope. <laughs> Borrowers who extend their amortization might find themselves with less financial flexibility later on. And it could even make it harder for them to build equity in their homes. Right. So it's a trade-off. It is. There are always trade-offs. The article also talks about the risks associated with Canada's mortgage securitization market. Okay, now that's getting a bit technical. It is, but basically it explains that if the housing market really crashes, yeah. 
or we see a surge in those mortgage defaults, right. it could end up impacting the federal government. Because they back a lot of mortgage insurance. Exactly. And that could translate into financial risks for taxpayers. Wow. So it all comes back to the taxpayers. It does. It shows how interconnected everything is. Yeah. It really does. The housing market, the financial system, the economy. It's all linked. So we need to think about the big picture. We do. Manoj seems to be really emphasizing the importance of professional advice. When it comes to mortgages. Yeah, this Nesto.ca article encourages readers to connect with mortgage experts. To get personalized guidance. Yeah, and develop a strategy that aligns with their own situation. Makes sense. The mortgage market is complicated. It is, and it's always changing. So it's good to have someone who understands all the nuances. Someone to guide you. Yeah, for sure. Now let's shift gears again. Okay, where are we going now? Let's look at some articles about the real estate industry itself. Okay. About the debate surrounding development charges in Toronto. Development charges, okay. It seems the Toronto Regional Real Estate Board, or TREB, which is... What are development charges exactly? They're fees that municipalities add to new developments. Okay. To help cover the cost of things like roads, sewers, parks. So it's like infrastructure costs. Right. And TRD believes that lowering these charges could make new housing more affordable. Okay. And encourage developers to build more. So it's all about incentives. It is. But some people are worried that if you lower development charges, yeah. it could just shift the cost burden onto existing taxpayers. Right. Or lead to cuts in the quality of infrastructure. Exactly. Yeah. So it's a tough call. It is. On the one hand, you want to encourage development. Yeah. And make housing more accessible. Right. But you also don't want to compromise the quality of life in the city. Or burden existing residents. Exactly. It's a balancing act. It is. It shows how complex these policy decisions can be. For sure, there are always trade-offs. Always. Well, it's been quite a journey. It has. We've covered a lot. We've explored the ups and downs of the Toronto new home market. The potential impact of government policies. Economic factors. Trends. Cautionary tales. And Minaj still has a few more articles. Oh, there's more. Yeah, and they touch on some sensitive and important issues. Okay, I'm intrigued. They're definitely eye-opening. Can't wait to hear about them. Stay with us as we unpack these final articles in the last part of our deep dive. Okay, we'll be right back. Welcome back to the deep dive. We're wrapping up our exploration of the GTA real estate market. Minaj saved the best for last. He did these last few articles that he picked out. Yeah. They touch on some pretty serious stuff. Yeah, these aren't just about market trends, you know? Right. It's about ethics and legal stuff that everyone in real estate should know about. Yeah, you're talking about those CBC Investigates pieces, right? Exactly the one about the lawyer who went to jail. Yeah. For stealing millions from her clients. To support her lavish lifestyle. Unbelievable, right? It's a reminder that even in a profession like law. Yeah, where there's a lot of oversight. You would think. You'd think so. There are still people who will take advantage. It's a shame. It is. It's scary to think about. Putting your trust in someone like that. Yeah. And your money. Especially with so much money at stake. And having them betray that trust. It's a good reminder to be cautious, you know? Yeah. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Right. Check credentials. Do your research. Yeah, before working with anyone. Especially when it comes to big financial transactions. Like absolutely. Trust, but verify. Exactly. And the other CBC Investigates article that Minaj included. Yeah. It dealt with those potential changes. To what? To how rental arrears are reported. Oh, interesting. It's a topic that raises some questions about fairness and transparency in the rental market. In what way? Well, the article explores the possibility of landlords being able to share information about tenants' past rental arrears. With who? With credit bureaus. Oh, wow. So it would be like a credit check. Kind of. Fit for renting. Yeah, and while landlords... You know, they have a legitimate interest in protecting themselves. Yeah, of course they want to screen tenants. Exactly. Make sure they're going to pay rent. But there are concerns that this type of reporting could unfairly penalize... Tenants who have had financial difficulties in the past. Exactly. What if someone fell behind on rent because they lost their job or had a medical emergency? Yeah, that's not their fault. Right. Did that follow them around forever? And make it harder to find housing. It could. It's a valid concern. Yeah, the article points out that this kind of reporting could create a system where people who've had financial problems yeah. are basically locked out of the rental market. And that makes it even harder for them to get back on their feet. Exactly. It's a tough one. It is, it's about finding that balance. Between protecting landlords and being fair to tenants. Right. It's a conversation we need to have. It is, and it's something for everyone to consider. Whether you're a landlord, a tenant, or just someone who cares about housing, well, yeah. it's important. 
Well, we've reached the end of our deep dive into the GTA real estate market. Wow. Time flies. It does, guided by all these insightful articles that Manoj Atri put together for his clients. Yeah, we covered a lot of ground. We did. We explored the challenges and opportunities, the trends, the uncertainties. Even some cautionary tales. <laughs> we saw that the Toronto new home market is slowing down. Prices and sales are falling. We talked about those new mortgage rules and interest rate cuts. Yeah, but affordability and supply are still big issues. They are. We discussed the role of government the impact of the economy. And the need to be informed and proactive. Exactly these articles that Manoa's chose. Yeah. They paint a really interesting picture of what's happening in the GTA. A nuanced picture. It is, and there are no easy answers. No, and the future is uncertain. So what does it all mean for you? That's the big question. And is, is it a good time to buy, sell, invest? Are we heading for a crash, or will the market stabilize? What other factors might come into play? So many questions. There are. But remember, knowledge is power. It is. The more you understand about the market, the better decisions you can make. And don't be afraid to ask for help. Yes. Connect with local experts. Like Manoj Atri. People who can give you personalized advice. Because real estate is a big investment. It is financially and emotionally. So it's worth taking the time to do things right. Absolutely. That's a wrap for today's deep dive. Thanks for joining us. We hope this exploration of the GTA real estate market. Through Manoj's eyes. Gave you some valuable insights. And something to think about. Remember, the market is always changing. So stay informed, stay curious. And keep exploring. Until next time. Happy investing.